Before leaving, please remember to make a contribution to all of my uh, thousands of hours of work uh, uh, here, uh, PayPal, Patreon, or fundraiser in the description below or on the China Rising Radio Sinoland art article page. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. This is Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio Sinoland on the beaches of Normandy and France. And today I'm really excited to have a, uh, a wonderful guest on the show today, Yusuf M. Al-Jamal. How are you doing today, Yusuf? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. I, you know, I, I, I don't know how we met. Uh, somehow we, you started, I think, subscribing to my Substack, and I started subscribing to your newsletter. And we, we, you know, and this happens when you when you're a writer and a, and a journalist, you, you you make all these friends all over the world. You you don't get to meet each other, but you become friends by email and correspondence, and and, and that that that's happened to us. So, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for hosting me, and I'm glad that um, our professional paths um, have crossed. Yeah, absolutely, you. absolutely. Let, this this guy's amazing. Let me tell you a little bit of uh, a, a little bit about him. Uh, Yusuf is a Palestinian refugee from the uh, Anusriyat refugee camp in uh, the Gaza Strip. He has obtained an MA degree from the Department of International and Strategic Studies Department, University of Malaya. He is now a Ph. candidate at the Middle East Institute at uh, Sakarya University in Turkey. So he's living in Istanbul right now. Uh, besides his research interests in diaspora, security, and indigenous studies, uh, he has been involved on a number of books which aimed to highlight the Palestinian narrative. Most importantly, he translated two books on Palestinian prisoners titled The Prisoner's Diaries, Palestinian Voices from the Israeli Gulag. <laughs> that's that's, that's the, the right word for it. 2013. It's, it's, um, and Dreaming of Freedom, Palestinian Child Prisoners Speak, 2016. Uh, he has published a number of journal articles on topics that include uh, Palestinians in the diaspora, travel restrictions imposed on Palestinian struggles for liberation and terrorism. Over the years, he has spoken at various forums and platforms to highlight the plight of Palestinians living under military occupation, and I would say that's an understatement because it's 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 just genocide. That's all. It's, that's just all there is to it. Anyway, I am subscribed to his blog newsletter. This this is Palestine, and I encourage you to do the same. Yusuf, can you tell people how to start subscribing to your newsletter? Uh, you just said it. They could uh, send me an email. This is Palestine and Gmail, and I will add them to to the okay, list. Okay, so uh, this this, this is Palestine at Gmail dot com, and then you'll you'll add you'll 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 add them. Okay, that's what we did together. Okay, yes. we are here today to discuss his new book, co-authored by Norma Hashem, uh, and it is entitled "A Shared Struggle." Stories of Palestinian and Irish hunger strikers, and I saw that, and I was like, "What? This is you know." And I told Yusuf, you know, when I I said, "Hey, we got to get to get a, I got to get you on the show and talk about this because <clears throat> I've got skin in both of these games." My father is a hundred percent Irish ancestry from Cork, Kerry, and Killarney counties, and in South Central Ireland, and I lived and worked in the Arab world, and uh, I speak Arabic and read and write. Well, it's pretty rusty right now, but I, but for 10 years, I lived and worked in the Arab world, and I got to actually travel to Palestine. So it was like, well, I've got to hear what, i got to hear what this guy yeah. has to say. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Anyway, before, he, before we get started, this is quite a book. It, there's a foreword by Richard Falk, and if you all don't know him, he is a very, very well-respected, internationally um, known human rights activist and has been involved in the United Nations for decades. And it has been endorsed by no none other than Jerry Adams, um, ex-political prisoner and former president of Sinn Féin. It has also been endorsed by Ramsey Baroud, uh, who I immediately recognize his name, and he is the author of These Chains Will Be Broken, Palestinian Stories of Struggle and De Defiance in Israeli Prisons. And I also recognize Ken Loach, who is an award-winning film director. So uh, Yusuf uh, and uh, Norma have uh, some, uh, some, some really um, 
um, uh, informed people uh, endorsing their book. You can order a copy. I will give you the link in the article. It's from an Irish um, uh, uh, re revolutionary Irish uh, bookstore. And so anyway, just tell us a little bit about your book. You know, tell us about just, you know, I, I, we took no notes. I sent you no questions. This is open, and I just want you to just tell us what you want uh, the people, all the fans out there to know. Okay, thank you very much for this um, lovely introduction. Um, so this is the third book that Norma and I have worked on, um, starting from 2013, as you mentioned. Uh, we have uh, published the uh, Prisoners' Diaries, uh, Palestinian Voices from the Israeli Gulag which was also translated into six different languages. Wow. Um, we have also published another book in 2016, which came out in two languages about Palestinian child prisoners um, in Israeli jails. Palestinian child prisoners um, speak. Yeah. And this is the third uh, book in our project which highlights the struggles of Palestinian and Irish hunger strikers. Yeah, that's incredible. So the reaction, the positive reaction that we received, the fact that the first book was translated into many languages, and um, I have spoken about the book and the issue of Palestinian prisoners in different countries. Um, we have received many positive reactions online and in person. Uh, this has encouraged us to continue this project because very often uh, when we talk about Palestinian prisoners, uh, especially in the uh, English-speaking world, they are viewed from security uh, lenses, they, they are treated as terrorists. No one talk about their political rights or political prisoners or even child prisoners, women prisoners, sick prisoners. So there are many aspects to uh, imprisonment in, in Palestine. And uh, uh, we felt the edge of telling their stories. So our project, the idea of our project is to uh, get prisoners themselves to speak about their plight, their aspirations, their dreams. We just convey these um, feelings, these writings. So all these stories in the three books were written by the prisoners themselves. Wow. This included some interviews here and there. But again, when the uh, journalists, uh, rewrote these stories, they rewrote them based on these real in-person interviews. Wow. Uh, uh, this book, A Shared Struggle. That's uh, your new one. I, I'm, I'm ordering it. I'm yeah, ordering it. It's, it's only 10, what was it, 10 euros? It's only 10 euros. Yes. It's not very so expensive. We, we made it very affordable for everyone. Yeah, uh, yeah, on that Irish Liberation, uh, Irish Liberation bookstore. Yes, yeah. and it's also uh, available in, in Malaysia, and it's available on the uh, Shane Fan uh, website, so there are different ways to, to order it. Um, I, I shared struggle stories of Palestinian and Irish hunger strikers. It's a collective effort. Uh, so Norma and I have worked with different people, uh, including uh, Dr. Asad Abu Sharkh and uh, Danny Morrison, uh, who edited the book. Uh, Danny Morrison himself is an Irish Republican and he was a spokesperson for uh, the Irish hunger strikers and he's the head of the Bobby Sands Trust. Uh, Dr. Asad Abu Sharq is a Palestinian Irish academic who is based in Dublin. Wow. We have also Dr. Richard Falk, as you mentioned, who yeah, yeah. forward for, for the book. Um, Asad and Danny also contributed an introduction. Uh, Norma Hashim is a Malaysian uh, social activist, and we've been together, we've been working uh, on these uh, books for the last eight years. Uh, oh. So we, we uh, know each other very well. Uh, I, can't, we I, can't wait to, I can't wait to read it, I'm ordering it. Yeah, thank you. So we have also other people who contributed to, to this book, journalists, for example, Muad al Amudi, who interviewed most of the general uh, of the hunger Palestinian hunger strikers. Faiha Shalash, who also interviewed some uh, hunger strikers from the West Bank. And uh, again, we have seven Irish Republican uh, former hunger strikers 
uh, like Pat Trehan, uh, for example, who contributed their stories. So we have Palestinian stories and Irish stories. And if you look at the book cover here. I know, it's uh, it's Palestinians who are supporting exactly. the, uh, the, 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 Irish, the Irish hunger strikes. It's just unreal. So we have uh, a process it's just like here. There's a, there's a bridge, there's a bridge of hope and inspiration between Palestine and Ireland. Uh, it's just un unbelievable. Yes, so we have uh, four Palestinian women, maybe um, in 1981, who were protesting in support uh, of Irish hunger strikers. Yeah, it's unreal. In front of an Israeli prison. So it's very iconic. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They have this banner that says Nafha, which is a, an Israeli prison, H block, Arma, one. Strike which was which was the prison yeah. which was the prison in Ireland. <laughs> yes, it's one struggle. So this is the idea of the book to tell yeah. people relate a lot. I've been to the U.S. I've been to Connecticut, uh, Hartford, and uh, I saw the only Bobby Sands. Um, uh, you know, momentum we call it um, in in the U.S. So people, at least in the U.S., relate to the experience of uh, Irish hunger strikers. And um, when you talk about hunger strike, there are a lot of people who have this connection with Ireland. So we thought that if we want to highlight the stories of Palestinian hunger strikers it should come together with ireland uh, there is uh, so much solidarity and support uh, for ireland and palestine and for palestine in ireland um, the boycott movement in ireland is very popular uh, yeah. ibds yes and IBDS, even yes ibds uh, it, israel yeah the the boycott word itself emerged in ireland captain boycott who was a British landlord who tried to take over um, Irish land. Uh, so people would warn each other and say boycott. So be, be, be careful, boycott. And then it became boycott, boycott. So this is uh, very important to, to highlight. And uh, historically, there are many examples where um, Irish people, for example, engaged in the Palestinian struggle. Um, and then if, if we look at the reviews of, of the book, uh, Jerry Adams, I met him by chance in Gaza at a hospital. My father was oh, He was in Gaza? Yes, he came to Gaza, I think, in 2008, 2009, around this time. And I happened to be in the same uh, hospital ward where he came to uh, check on kidney uh, patients who were struggling because of the lack of electricity in Gaza. And I met him. Uh, and he was along with other uh, former Irish uh, hunger strikers who, who came with him. Uh, we have endorsements from other people all over the world. We have Palestinians, we have non-Palestinians, we have uh, Mahmoud Sarsak, who's uh, himself a former Palestinian uh, hunger striker and footballer who lives in the UK. Uh, we have endorsements from Richard Boyd Parrott, he's a TD, an Irish TD. Uh, Senator Francis Black is also an Irish senator. And uh, we have uh, endorsements from Hawaii, so it's important. We have Dr. Kehawalani, Kawanunu. Yeah, well, the Hawaiians have their own liberation movement too. Yeah. <laughs> since, they, yeah. since they were since they were invaded and conquered by the U.S. Marines. So it's important to highlight indigenous struggles, uh, be it in Ireland, be it in Hawaii, be it in Palestine. I've been to Hawaii as well, and. Uh, um, I saw the Palestinian flag flying there on the top of Mount Kia, where uh, the indigenous Hawaiian people are protesting. So this is the idea of the book, to tell the stories of Palestinian and Irish hunger strikers, to show the similarities and differences. There are a lot of similarities. There are some differences, um, especially when it comes to hunger strikes and prisoners, the issue of prisoners. For example, the uh, many Palestinian prisoners who go on uh, individual hunger strikes today um, do so because they protest uh, the administrative law uh, kind of detention, which is a British law, 
um, that was used by Israel and is still being used by Israel, where they are held without uh, trial or charge indefinitely. Yeah. Uh, for example, Mahmoud Sarsak, who uh, wrote a review for this book, um, was held uh, under this um, administrative law. There are many Palestinians who are held under uh, this administrative law where they spend years and years in Israeli jails without charge or trial. Uh, it's a British law. Um, there are also some similarities when it comes to uh, mass hunger strikes uh, between Palestine and Ireland to improve the um, uh, imprisonment conditions. For example, family visits, uh, allowing books, uh, cigarettes, uh, fans, what, whatever, you know, prisoners, education, for example. Yeah, 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 yeah. Family visits um, are restricted in both cases, and they use as punishment, collective punishment. Prisoners who are in hunger side are tied to their prison, um, hospital beds. Uh, so we see some similarities, uh, but at the same time, we recognize that there are some differences. Uh, even when we talk about other struggles, which is normal, and for example, in Hawaii, it's not like Palestine. In, in, in South Africa, it's not like Palestine, but as um, a people under military occupation and colonization, and as you put it, genocide. It is genocide, so there's no other word for it. It's just awful. We draw uh, the you know inspiration from other people to continue this struggle, and we're happy to support other people uh, and to receive the support of other people as well. And we see this happening. Um, you know, minorities, uh, indigenous people are standing together. Um, I, as I said, I've seen this clearly in Hawaii. I saw many indigenous flags, uh, including the Palestinian flag, uh, where people also in Hawaii, thousands of miles away, drew inspiration from Palestine, and they knew about Palestine. Um, so it's important that we as uh, people under colonization, educate each other about the, the struggles of other people. And this is just one way to do it, to tell the stories of people using their own words. Has there, has there, ever, been any, has there ever been any outreach to the um, uh, Nation of Islam in the United States and also the Black Panthers? The Black Panther movement and 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 the Nation of Islam, uh, Louis Farrakhan. Has there ever, has there ever been any? Have you ever ever had any dialogue with them? I'm not sure if there is um, if there was a serious dialogue. However, uh, Malcolm X, for example. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, grave in New York uh, two years ago uh, is one of the. Um, Famous names that, that is always mentioned among Palestinian activists. Yeah. Uh, we have read Malcolm X. Um, my teacher at the Islamic University of Gaza, Rifat Al-Ra'ir, is a big fan of Malcolm X. And I have a friend uh, of mine uh, who, after reading Malcolm X, said, I wish if I were born black. <laughs> I, was, I would be born Malcolm <laughs> Yes. And, um, but also there are connections with uh, Black Lives Matter, for example. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, Afro-American, you know, movement in Palestine okay. and Ferguson and other, you know, parts of, of, of the U.S. So, yes, okay, that, that, okay, great. That's that's great. that delegations, actually. There's a delegation, an Afro-American delegation that visited... Uh, for example, refugee camps in Lebanon that I am aware of. And there are more people who come to Palestine itself. Uh, we, I have met with uh, many Afro-Americans. Uh, um, you know, speaking of police brutality, for example, yeah, yeah. violence and training uh, some American police departments in Israel is a concern. Yeah. The last thing that they should learn, violence and using violence, they use their quote-unquote experience against Palestinians to, um, uh, you know, to transfer it to um, to the U.S. police um, department. So there, there are calls and initiatives to stop this. In South, I know Dakota, for example, uh, Durham, and uh, other parts of the U.S., uh, the people I spoke to, 
uh, told me similar things. You know, when I spoke about the Israeli war and surveillance and cameras and police brutality and suspicion and how, you know, Afro-Americans are treated in many different cases we've seen with uh, uh, George Floyd, but there are other different examples, many different examples. So we draw similarities when we talk about surveillance. Israel is uh, now with the NSO and, uh, you know, the uh, scandal of uh, spying oh, on... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, spying on all the leaders and the journalists. So they have, they have Pegasus, I think it was called Pegasus, wasn't it? Yes. The, yeah. This is the name of these, uh, the, the software. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, speaking of uh, police brutality and surveillance and cameras, and these are similar things that we, um, we connect with each other. We, we feel like um, somehow united in, in, in this struggle, that, in this injustice. That's that should end. Yeah, absolutely. You t you sent me a picture which I will come which I will do a montage with the book cover uh, for your uh, for 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 your interview today uh, on on China Rising Radio Sinoland, and it, you're standing next to the uh, tombstone or at least a grave marker of some kind. Um, I don't know if it's actually where he's buried, but there is a marker, a marker of Bobby Sands. Tell us about Bobby Sands a little bit. Cause so you obviously you were in Ireland and so you were standing next to Bobby Sands. Uh, so great marker. This picture was taken two, a year and a half ago in the U.S., not in Ireland. Oh, in the U.S. OK. Yes. All right. And um, that's why I said Bobby Sands is popular. In, okay. In, okay. Uh, interesting. Okay. Well, yeah, especially in Massachusetts, Boston, yes, New York, New York yeah, where, yeah, in Connecticut, um, where there's a lot of Irish uh, heritage. Yeah. So this is uh, like a statue of Bobby Sands, and it's the only statue of Bobby Sands in uh, in, in the U.S. Huh. And uh, my friend told me about it, and uh, I decided. I told him about the book. I was working on the book by Ben, and uh, I decided to, um, you know, go there and take this photo. Yeah, tell us about Bobby Sands. Just a, a brief uh, little rundown of what about Bobby Sands. He was an Irish revolutionary. Yes, he was an Irish Republican, and um, he was in, you know, British jails. He was arrested by the British, and he went on hunger strike in uh, North Ireland, and he lost his life while on hunger strike. Uh, and while in the prison, he was elected as a representative of, of the Irish uh, people. So the publishing house um, of this book, um, it's uh, in Irish, so I'm not good in Irish, you know, I'm, I'm not. Um, but it means the lock, which is um, it's like the national bird of, of Ireland. And uh, it's named after a poem written by Bobby Sands. Oh, okay. The Freedom Fighter. Uh, okay. Okay. A publishing house that also published the diaries of uh, Bobby Sands. Um, so yes, we also have a, a mural of Bobby Sands and some of his poems in this book. Okay. Cool. Okay. I can't wait to get it. I'm really, yeah. really excited to read it. And uh, as Bobby Sands says, our revenge will be the laughter of our children. Uh, so that's why we do these projects. It's because we know that one day we will be free, uh, just like the, the Irish people won their freedom. And uh, there's also another famous saying in Irish, says, uh, our day will come. Uh, so we feel that our day will come one day uh, and we will uh, win our freedom. Yeah, absolutely. Well, just a a quick rundown. You know, the the Palest the Palestinian um, genocide did not start in 1948 with the creation of Israel. It started back in 1917 with the sykes uh, uh partition of the middle uh, of of the Levant, and it started with the Balfour Declaration, and they started flooding, you know, Palestine Palestine with. Um, uh, with with uh, Jews from uh, from all over the world, with the intent to um, expel the Palestinians from their ancestral homelands, 
And that's what's happening, unfortunately. And and now there's, I think, eight or nine million Palestinians uh, all over the in the diaspora all over the world. And uh, ongoing awful, you know, expropriation of land, murder, uh, you know, gunning people down, imprisonment of children. I mean, it's it's fascism as far as I'm concerned. And then as far as the the Irish, they were they were colonized 800 years ago. They were treated by the British worse than cattle. They were treated worse than dogs for 800 years. They were essentially serfs and slaves um, in their own in their own country. The potato famine in 1864 was a legislated, planned genocide of the Irish people for standing up for their independence. Three million Irish died. A couple of million more left the country, uh, and that's why their population is so low today. You know, it's just that they've only got a few million people because they were basically depopulated well, by by legislated legislated um, genocide in the potato fam- in the during the potato famine. And that's when my dad's um, relatives came to the United States was in was in the 1860s. So this has been going on for a long time, you know, both in Palestine and uh, in Ireland. And and uh, I'm really impressed with you, uh, Yusuf. You're a you're a you're a stellar young man and you have I, th- I think you have a bright future ahead of you. And I really want to thank you for being on the show. Is there anything anything you'd like to close with uh, before we say goodbye? Uh, I would like to thank you for hosting me today, and I hope that more people will be able to get the book and, you know, to read the uh, first-hand experiences of these um, Palestinian and uh, Irish Republican uh, prisoners who uh, went on hunger strike and see the similarities. Yeah, Uh, it's unbelievable. um, They draw, you know, this book draws the, the needed awareness um, to end the plight, the ongoing plight of the Palestinian people. Just like last Friday, uh, 41 Palestinians, uh, civilians were shot at the Gaza border while protesting the siege, including a 13-year-old who was shot in the neck. And he's in a critical condition. So this is our, you know, my last call is, is for people to um, get to know what is happening in Palestine, there are different ways uh, reading this book, but also social media now, the people on the ground who are reporting in, in different languages, uh, they can get in touch with them. They don't have to watch the um, quote-unquote fake mainstream media. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And different ways to educate themselves, and it's important that they also teach what they learn to, to their um, fellow nationals and citizens to to bring about change because this has to end it's been um, you know the, the situation in palestine uh, has been the same and is getting worse also by the day since 1917 as i as you said uh, it's because of the balfour declaration yeah that the irish people call bloody balfour uh, yeah. that gave uh, what he doesn't own to those who do not deserve, and uh, <laughs> exactly. what Palestinians say, and uh, he promised them a land without a people. You know, this the Zionist, the idea of the Zionist movement is Palestine was a land without a people to a people. Yeah, yeah. A land with a people with rich history and culture. Um, it was a, a lie, and it's time to end this injustice uh, by giving. Um, equality to all people who want to, who wish to live between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean. Yeah, absolutely. Here, here, here. Well, and, and then hopefully uh, the the other goal, of course, is to is to unify the entire Ireland, uh, the island of Ireland, and reunite Northern Ireland, uh, which was left there as a canker sore to frustrate and. Um, uh, help control uh, uh, and sabotage Ireland. Uh, also, going back to, to the, back to the, the the times of the First World War. So it's just this is the, this has been going on for so long. And 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 another thing I encourage people to do, like the other day, I went to the grocery store and there were grapefruit from Israel. I didn't buy them. You, you know, you can BDS. Um, 
if you see, I, I don't go to Israeli restaurants. I, if, if, if I know there's an, an Israeli connection, I don't go. I, I don't spend my money there. I refuse to. IBDS, even though it's been outlawed in the United States in many places and people have lost their jobs for supporting BDS and s individual states, you know, boycott, um, uh, boycott, uh, what is it, uh, sanction? What's the D? Boycott, divestment, and sanction. Yeah, dive, I, I can't divest because I've got nothing, but I can sure boycott. I can sure boycott anything that, that, that's, that, that's from Israel. It can. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's an Israeli restaurant in, uh, you know, in Paris. I'm not going to go there. I'm just, I'm just not going to go. I'm just refuse to. So, uh, so, uh, so we individuals can boycott. We, uh, we can't divest. Uh, uh, and uh, sanction exactly, but we sure can not buy stuff from, uh, uh, buy goods and services from Israel. Well, listen, Yusuf, this has been a wonderful talk. I hope it sells a few books um, and um, can't wait to get mine. And uh, I'm also going to put in the, in, on your interview page, there was a wonderful four, I'm sure you know it, there was a wonderful five video series on Al Jazeera called Al Nakba. And um, uh, it's just unbelievable. And I downloaded them to make sure because they actually got censored for a while. The the uh, <clears throat> the, the, the Israeli Hasbara, they got it taken away, off of YouTube for a while. They're back up, but I've downloaded them. It's a five part documentary, 40 minutes each each documentary. And, with, and, and it just goes through the whole history of the Balfour Declaration and the sykes dico and you know partition of, of 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 the Levant between France and Britain and and it just walks walks you know the whole thing you know the, the then the American you know Jewish lobby got into it and started you know you know paying for Jews to go to Palestine and and it just it just goes through the whole thing up to 1948 and the you know all the gangsterism and terrorism by Zionist extremists, you know, killing and wiping out entire villages, Palestinian villages. And anyway, it's a wonder, it's a wonderful five part series. And so I'll add that link uh, uh, to your page. Shukran uh, <laughs> and, and, uh and uh, if you ever, if you can ever make it to France, uh, you, you know, I'd lo love, love to meet you and have a Kahwa uh, Turki. And uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, I miss I miss living and working in the Arab world, and and I miss speaking the language, and and I miss re you know reading the language. It's 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 such a beautiful beautiful language. But anyway, thank you so much, and I will now give you a Buddhist <laughs> a Buddhist a sign of peace and pro a peace and uh, peace and. Um, and uh and and well-being and and uh, i'll let you know when this gets put up on china rising okay okay thank you very much for having bye -bye. me bye-bye bye bye-bye china rising radio sign the land and china tech news flash signing out please make a contribution to all of my hard work thank you